In this video, we'll talk about antiplatelets, anticoagulants, and thrombolytics. Thrombosis is the formation of unwanted clot within a blood vessel. When it adheres to a blood vessel, it's called thrombus, but if it floats in the blood, it will be called impulse. Thrombotic disorders include myocardial infraction, pulmonary embolism, and acute ischemic stroke. Let's see how the clot is formed, so we can understand how the medications will work on that. Here we have a blood vessel which is made of endothelial cells. Say that an injury happened here. The story will begin with platelets. Now we have prostacyclin and nitric oxide which are synthesized by intact endothelial cells and acts as inhibitors of platelet aggregation. But in damaged endothelial cells, less prostacyclin are there, so this will result in platelet aggregation. Now platelets will adhere to the exposed collagen fibers and this will change their shape. These misshaped platelets will release platelet granules containing chemical mediators like ADP, thromboxane A2, serotonin, and platelet activation factor. Those will activate and attract other platelets. Now we need these platelets to be attached to each other. Here comes the rule of activating GP2B3A receptors. Fibrinogen binds to these receptors in two separate platelets, resulting in platelet crosslinking. This will create a platelet block. But that's not quite enough. We need fibrin mesh to hold everything together and form a hard clot. Fibrin is a result of coagulation pathway. We have extrinsic and intrinsic pathway. Logically, we'll start from the extrinsic pathway, which starts with tissue factor. Tissue factor is released by damaged endothelial cells. TF will activate factor 7, which activates factor 10, and this will activate thrombin. Thrombin now can convert fibrinogen to fibrin. Thrombin will spark the activity of intrinsic coagulation cascade. Intrinsic pathway starts with factor 12, from that it goes to factor 11, 9, then factor 10. We also have factor 13, which is activated by thrombin, that links fibrin together. Okay, now this does not happen only when there is a damage to the blood vessels. According to the virtual triad, thrombosis causes are 1. Damage to the endothelial lining of the blood vessel, 2. Hypercoagulable state, which can be acquired or inherited. Acquired causes can result from medication like oral contraceptives or heavy smoking or infection. Third cause is arterial or venous blood stasis that can be caused by immobility, pregnancy, or impaired blood flow resulting from previous thrombosis. Now let's talk about our treatment agents. Now the first phase of forming the clot is the platelet aggregation. Here comes the rule of antiplatelets. First, we have aspirin. Now remember thromboxane A2, which is one of the chemical mediators that cause platelet aggregation. Well, aspirin is an irreversible COX-1 enzyme inhibitor that inhibits the formation of prostaglandin H2, which will convert to thromboxane A2. Aspirin is used as a prophylactic treatment to reduce incidence of recurrent MI or stroke. Side effects include prolonged bleeding and GI alkylation. Second, we have the P2Y12 blockers like clobidogrel, ticagrelor, and ticlobidine. Normally, ADP will bind to this receptor to activate the GP2B3A receptor, which activates fibrinogen that causes platelet crosslinking. This agent will block the P2Y12 receptors. Clobidogrel is approved for prevention for patients with recent MI, stroke, and ACS. Side effects include GI hemorrhage, hematoma, and puride. And last agents in this group are the GP2B3A inhibitors, like abiximab, abtifibatide, and tirofibine. Now let's talk about anticoagulants. These agents will work on coagulation cascade. We'll start on the parenteral anticoagulants. First, we have heparin, which will work on accelerating antithrombin-3, which is found naturally as a negative feedback to the coagulation cascade, but it works slowly. Antithrombin decreases the amount of thrombin produced, so we will have less activated factor 10. Eventually, this will lead to the limitation of thrombi expansion by decreasing febrin. It is used as VTE prophylaxis and as a treatment of acute DVT or PE. Side effects include bleeding, heparin induced thrombocytopenia, hyperkalemia, and osteoporosis with long term use. It's monitored by APTT, and the antidote is protamine. Then we have low molecular weight heparin, like enoxaparin. They selectively accelerate antithrombin effect on factor 10 only. 
Side effects include bleeding, anemia, high LFTs, thrombocytopenia, and hyperkalemia. Monitored by monitoring anti-XA level and the antidote is protamine. Then we have ergotropin, it is direct thrombin inhibitor, and pivlorudine, which inhibit thrombin on its active site and on fibrinogen binding site. They both cause bleeding, anemia, and hematoma, and they are both monitored by APTT. Then we have fundobarinx, which inhibits factor 10A, which is the activated form of factor 10. The side effects include bleeding, thrombocytopenia, hypokalemia, and hypotension, monitored by anti-XA levels. Now let's talk about oral anticoagulants. First, we have warfarin. Now factor 2, 7, 9, and 10 are all vitamin K-dependent factors. In order for these agents to be activated, they need to be carboxylated by vitamin K. Warfarin will inhibit vitamin K reductase, which will decrease the amount of vitamin K. Therefore, these agents cannot be activated. It has narrow therapeutic window and is associated with different drug-drug interaction and food-drug interaction. So, it needs closed INR monitoring. Side effects include bleeding, skin lesion and necrosis, purple 2 syndrome, and the antidote available is vitamin K. Then we have NUACs, like rivaroxaban, apixaban, and edoxaban. All of these three agents are factor 10A inhibitors. They differ in half-life. Edoxaban has the longest half-life of 10 to 14 hours, then apixaban 9 to 11 hours, and rivaroxaban 5 to 9 hours. There is no available antidote for these three agents, and the side effects include bleeding and anemia. Then we have dabigatran, which is direct thrombin inhibitor. The antidote available is idarosuzumab. The side effects include dyspepsia, gastritis-like symptoms, and bleeding. And last agents we have are the thrombolytics. Now all the previous agents work on stopping the clot formation, while these agents like alteplase, rituplase, and tinctoplase can dissolve a clot by converting plasminogen to plasmin, which will hydrolyze fibrin. These agents can cause a serious hemorrhage. For this reason, it's contraindicated in these situations. Patients with healing wounds, history of cerebrovascular injury, intracranial bleeding, and metastatic cancer. And that's the end of this video. Special thanks to Dr. Hisham for reviewing the information in this video. And don't forget to share, like, and subscribe.